Okay. <clears throat> Romans chapter 11. Where should I begin? Thirteen. Let me just begin at thirteen. So Romans chapter eleven, verse thirteen. But I am speaking to you who are Gentiles, inasmuch as that I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. If somehow I might move to jealousy, my fellow countrymen <coughs> sorry, I was strep throat. <coughs> my fellow countrymen and save some of them. He's speaking about the Jews, as Paul was a Pharisee. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? Moving on to 16. If, first, if the first piece of dough is holy, the lump is also. And if the root is holy, the branches are too. But if some of the branches are broken off, and you, being a wild olive, are grafted among them and become partaker with them, the rich root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant towards the branches. But if you are arrogant, remember that it is not you who supports the roots, but the root that the root, the root that supports you. You will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. Quite right, they were broken off and their unbelief, for their unbelief. But you stand by your faith. Do not conceit, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Behold, the kindness and severity of God to those who who felt severity, but to you, God's kindness, if continued in his kindness, otherwise you you also will be cut off. Um, now, I can go on. Um, in fact, I will. And they also, if they did not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. <coughs> for if you were cut off. And it goes on like this. Now, who is cut off? His country, Paul's countrymen, the Jews, the Pharisees. Who is grafted in? The Gentiles. And he's telling them, don't be haughty. And, you know, this is why, you know, he's, Paul is, um, is, is raging against um, the Judaizers, right? Because they're Gentiles who are now acting like Jews and acting like they're better than other people. You know, if we if we if we follow, you know, these laws, these 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 superfluous laws, right, that make us outwardly appear more Jewish, or outwardly appear more, um, well, make us appear more Jewish, so maybe people might think we're more righteous. No, God can rip you out, rip you off too, because what is what is the what is the bush that he's talking about? What is the what is the olive tree that he's talking about? Well, the roots are Abraham, Jesse, Isaac, Jacob. And the tree is is Israel, right? Is is the one is the believers, right? We have the icon of of um the tree of Jesse, right? So right there, your replacement theology, um those who speak against replacement theology, who are Christians, especially the Protestants, it doesn't make much sense. I mean, unless you're John Hagee, who's getting paid by Mossad and the State of Israel and George Soros, um, you know, if you're a Protestant, don't you believe that you're saved by faith? alone, not even by grace or, you know, bearing the fruit of works or, you know, accompanied by works, just, just faith. That's it. Right. And, uh, none of the mysteries are, are, they're not, they don't even exist. Right. They would call them sacraments, but they don't even believe they exist. So baptism, the Eucharist, none of this is, 
It's just God has declared you his own, right? So that verse must mean that he grafted, you know, you onto him, you know, onto the, the righteous people, right? You know, declared or whatever. So I would think that would have more impact for a Protestant, but anyone reading that, anyone reading that verse would go, oh, yeah. So what's this business with replacement theology? I know I made, this is the second video on it, but what is this business of, of replacement? Because I I looked up, because um, I wanted to get a snappy image for um, the thumbnail, and I look up replacement theology, and I see um, replacement theology is anti-Semitism. And it's a picture of a guy sitting on a branch, or sitting on a limb, sawing um, on the limb between him and the tree. Um, and then another one where it shows uh, somebody reading a hand with a stylus on the on, on, on Talmudic, or not Talmudic, on a, on a Torah scroll, and says, refuting the lie of replacement theology. Um, now, I don't know why a Jew would even need to refute replacement theology, because it's Paul, right? Um, and then here's a stupid thing where it shows an old-timey sign as if it was segregation. It says, Christians only, Jews not allowed, and then danger spelled incorrectly. Well, unfortunately, that's ridiculous because in the modern state of Israel, the exact opposite is happening. And then here's another cartoon. It says, Amos 3, verse 7, and then it has a group of people, and the gentleman's sawing. He's this, this group of people's on a limb, and the gentleman is sawing the limb between his family and the tree. So they're going to fall and says, what is replacement theology? Let's just take a look at Amos 3. I really like the prophet Amos, or Amos 3, verse 7. Uh, I've got the hanker and suspicion that it's, it's, it's not going to back up uh, whatever the hell. You know, there's Obadiah. I really like Obadiah. I have to say that that's the one case where the King James I find superior is uh, Obadiah, T. Habakkuk, Zechariah, Malachi. Malachi is the last book, so I went too far. Amos 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord does nothing unless he reveals his secret counsel to his servants, the prophets. Mm -hmm. And Jeremiah uh, told about a new and everlasting covenant, right? And then we had John the Baptist, or John the Forerunner, who was the last of the Old Testament prophets. We have Isaiah. Right. Um, if you are a Christian, right? If you are a a, a, a Christian, um, maybe Messianic Jews don't want to accept this, right? Because they want the best of both worlds, or some 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 crazy. I don't know. Make sure they don't read the Epistle to the Galatians, though. But let's say you are some um, some Protestant who's not a Messianic Jew, a Jews for Jesus type person, but. Uh, you really want to hold on to this idea. I don't know why. Um, again, I would say then don't read any of Paul if you don't like replacement theology. But um, you would have to get yourself declared righteous among the earth. You would have to be on the same par as Cyrus the Great. Or, you know, you know Melchizedek or uh, Jethro. You would have to be, you know, somebody so special and set apart that even though you're not a Jew, the God, the Jewish God, still shines down on you and is just, you know, Messianic Jews in the second century. Who does this show? What is this a fake icon of? Justin Martyr. Wow. Justin Martyr, really? The guy that argued, what he, he argued against uh, Typho, right? 
or Philo. I forget my memory. My memory. Please forgive my uh, my t my terrible memory. Um, but no, uh, this will be second video speaking about replacement theology. Or or what gets horribly called replacement theology, supersessionism, I guess it's truly called, or just what Christians believed for 1,500 years. What Christians everywhere believed for 1,500 years. In Ethiopia, in India, in Syria, in Rome, in England, in Germany, in Russia, in China, in Mexico. So I guess this will be part two. It's even offensive to talk about replacement theology. Because what's the alternative? Or supersessionism. That's like saying, you know, resurrection theology. Are you one of those weird Christians that believe Christ rose from the dead? All right, peace to you. I guess I'll just, I'll label this Romans chapter 11 versus um, Judaizers. Peace to you.